Shout out to Challenged Athletes. Their link will be in the description down below. In honor of Super Bowl 52, and this week is the Super Bowl, I've decided to compile 10 moments that mark the Super Bowl in the 2000s, underline the 2000s, not the 1900s, all right? Also, if you disagree with some, tell me in the comments down below. I've ever seen in my life. Here comes one of greater importance if he makes it. And it's right down the pipe. Yes, I can hear your groans from the screen. I know, I know. You've probably seen this a billion times. But it is one of the great Super Bowl moments in the 2000s. And it started the Patriot Dynasty, which may or may not end this year, if they even win or lose. So yeah, uh, Adam Minateri kicks the field goal against the greatest show on turf. And I don't even think I remember the greatest show on turf ever since. Yeah, kind of ended them and started Tom Brady's way to greatness. So, uh, yeah, that's number 10. Picked up. Look out. Gets past Manning. And it's Tracy Porter taking it all the way. Yeah, number nine is Tracy Porter picking off Peyton Manning in the crucial moments of that Saints game. Colts Super Bowl. Uh, well, the Saints were up 24-17, and Peyton had the ball in the fourth quarter with three minutes to go, and that pick six by Tracy Porter was incredibly clutch, sealing the game for New Orleans, and, well, Peyton lost, and this is a huge reason why people say Peyton is not as good as Tom Brady, because we've seen Brady carry teams in the clutch, all right? So, uh, yeah, that's number nine. On to number eight. Pump fake. Wallace picked off. Nick Collins. Nick Collins on the return inside the 10. At number eight, we have Nick Collins picking off a stupid Big Ben pass to Mike Wallace, who I'm pretty sure he targeted Mike Wallace like 200 times in that game. That's why they probably lost. And, yeah, Big Ben getting picked off, trying to throw a deep pass to Mike Wallace, but his throw power is not good enough, and he just gets picked off by Nick Collins. Great blocking by Green Bay, and Nick Collins, what an effort to dive into the end zone, and that was a huge turning point in that Super Bowl. Lombardi, who's the new general manager of the Cleveland Browns. It was Joe Banner and Lombardi, actually, who brought John Harbaugh out of Indiana University to the Eagles. And later on, it was Lombardi bringing him out to the Raiders. Jim Harbaugh, that is. And this could be a run back from nine deep for Jacoby Jones. And look at him go. Jones is past the 50, and he is flying inside the 20. And a kickoff return, 109 yards. Yeah, at number seven, we chose Jacoby Jones' 109-yard kickoff return because it was very effective for the Ravens to win the Super Bowl. Honestly, I think Jacoby Jones deserved the Super Bowl MVP because that was huge. He had another cool touchdown and this kick return, which really put the momentum on the Ravens' side. Of course, there was a certain shutout, but uh, we don't have to go too in-depth on that. But... Either way, the Ravens still won 34-31, so yay. On to number seven. What a slot left. Washington outside left. Roethlisberger has time. Throws to the back of the end zone, and it is caught for a touchdown by Holmes. <laughs> to the corner of the end zone. Does he get both feet down? Left definitely. Did the right tackle? Yeah, number six, you guys saw this coming in the list, I'm pretty sure, because I'm pretty sure a bunch of Steelers fans bragged about this a lot. Uh, yeah, so Ben Roethlisberger to San Antonio Holmes to crush the Cardinals, even though I really wanted the Cardinals to win. 
because Larry Fitzgerald, am I right? Um, yeah, Ben Roethlisberger broke Cardinals fans' hearts. Kind of like Cam Newton did in that NFC Championship, even though it wasn't even close. So yeah, on to uh, number five. Watch his feet. Clean kick. And remember, there. <sighs> so at number five, we have the Giants throwing it to Manningham, breaking my heart once again. Yeah, I'm a Patriots fan, and this has been very devastating looking at this video back again. I mean, how do you catch that? More and all, two guys were guarding him, Patrick Chung and I think Rodney Harrison when he was older, but I'm not sure. But, man, how do you catch that? How can we not tip that? That catch was so good, but I got to give props to Eli, man. What a throw. I mean, that just saved the Giants season right there. And they crushed us internally, 21-17, winning the Super Bowl. Tom Coughlin triumphs over Bill Belichick again. So, yeah, I don't want to talk more about this. So, on to number four. Careful. Russell in the pocket. Russell for curse, and it's broken up again. And... So, uh, yeah, number four, I decided to put up Curse's catch because that was an amazing catch, all right? At this time, I was weeping because I already knew it was over and my heart was going to be broken for the third time. And, uh, yeah, but thank God there was another play foreshadowing Pete Carroll's bad decision. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, what a catch. Wilson throws it downfield. Malcolm Butler plays great defense, but he just tips it up, and it literally, by luck, I swear, it comes right down at his legs, and somehow, bobbling it, he catches it inbound, and goes out of bounds. And then we had the Marshawn Lynch run, and then that play. So yeah, on to number three. Play clock at five. Pass is intercepted at the goal line by Malcolm Butler. Unreal. Malcolm Butler, who almost made the phenomenal play that wound up in Percy's arms. There are flags on the field for a celebration. Amazing. Butler, a rookie free agent out of West Alabama. They try to pick play Al. They tried to go here, but he beats him to the punch. And I'm sorry, but I can't believe the call. Me neither. I cannot believe the call. You've got Marshawn Lynch in the backfield. You've got a guy that's been borderline unstoppable in this part of the field. I can't believe the call. And there is Brady. <laughs> As demonstrative as ever, and Richard Sherman. Oh, uh, yeah, wow, it's the Malcolm Butler pig. I I'm pretty sure you guys didn't see this coming. So, uh, yeah, uh, Wilson tries to hit Ricardo Lockett in a slant and just gets picked off by Malcolm Butler. Great play by Malcolm Butler. At this time, I was crying in tears of joy. Like, man, this Super Bowl... It was a roller coaster for me. Down 10. Brady Wills is back to the lead. That curse catch gave me a heart attack. And then this pick, man, sweet finish. That classic Richard Sherman face, though, it made my day, man. So, yeah, uh, the Malcolm Butler pick, everyone. I'm pretty sure you guys have never seen this one before. down with a football and they're saying it's a catch and we'll get another look at this Alford knocked it up into the air and let's see who comes down with it oh that's a catch oh my god that's incredible 
That's amazing concentration by Julian Edelman to be able to make a play Atlanta on that. Is challenging the ruling on the field of a completed pass. We'll review the play. The ball was resting on the arm of Ricardo Allen, and Edelman able to re grab it before he hits the ground. I checked with Mike Pereira in our booth. He thinks it's a catch, and the play is being challenged by Atlanta. And it should have been an interception by Robert Alford. I mean, he makes a play on this. He's in perfect position right there to intercept that ball. Instead, it gets popped up. But Julian Edelman. Oh, wow. Another Patriots play. He must be so biased. Honestly, I'm going to be honest, very honest. I couldn't find another 2000 Super Bowl play. And Edelman's catch was really just godly. Without it, we wouldn't have won. So, yeah, Julian Edelman, everyone. Pretty sure the Falcons choked and gave us the game. So, uh, yeah, Julian Edelman's catch, everyone. Yeah, I mean, what happened was Brady threw a pretty bad pass that I thought would get picked off. Gets tipped up in the air. It's like the curse catch, but even more glorious. So, um, yeah, uh, Julian Edelman, everyone. came close to a game-ending interception. Well, that's about as demonstrative as you're going to see Eli Manning. Pressure from Thomas off the edge. Eli Manning stays on his feet. Airs it out down the field. It is caught by Tyree. Inside the 25 and a timeout taken. The helmet catch. My horror story. One of the worst catches I've ever seen. We were supposed to go 19. No, I remember it. We just went past Philip Rivers' torn ACL and his team. And I was like, wow, we only have the Giants. And Tyree crushed my heart. The Giants crushed my heart. Asante Samuel dropped an easy interception. Um, And yeah, I mean, David Tyree, man. That was the luckiest catch ever. I mean, we had Eli right in our hand. We just had to push him down, and we couldn't even do that. He somehow stumbles his way out like a, some sort of Minnesota miracle type stuff. And, like, all of a sudden, he just throws one ball up. And I'm like, wow, this is going to be incomplete, isn't it? And then Rodney Harrison, all he needs to do, man, you had one job, man. You just needed to tip the ball down. Did you do that? Of course you didn't, Rodney. Rodney, I love you and all. You got the game-winning pick against Philly. And, but, the thing is, you just needed to tip the ball down. And that was the most traumatic event in my mind. The way Eli steps up, puts his hand on the ground, gets up, chucks the ball up. And Tyree just clutches on it with his helmet. How I still don't believe how he could do something like that. I don't even know where he is right now. But, yeah, one of the most traumatic events in my mind. I just need to get this thing over with. So, yeah, uh, that's my Super Bowl moments in the 2000s. Uh, comment down below what I should do, and please subscribe.